the world. <laughs> I, um, I drove six hours yesterday to be here with you today. Thank you. You're welcome. Now that it's only six hours any time, I'm really, I'm really amazed that so many of you are out and, and then again not amazed because it's a great reason to be out and learning about and being involved with this. Um, my name is Melissa Davis and I'm the energy manager for the Houghton Energy Efficiency Team and also the managing director of this nonprofit called New Power Tour which started in 2006. <laughs> and, um, I, I, I wish I would have included a picture in my slides of where we're from, but I'm from the Keweenaw Peninsula, Houghton and Hancock up north, if any of you have been up in that area. We had the um, great good fortune to become interest, involved in a competition, and it was called the Georgetown University Energy Prize. And this competition, um, 50 communities across the country, Madison included, got involved in um, this competition to save as much natural gas and electricity as you po the community possibly could in a period of two years. So um, we measured homeowner and municipal electricity and we set the baseline in 2013, 2014. The competition period was in 2015 and 2016, so that's been a year ago. And we had um, pretty good results. <laughs> We actually brought down our domestic and municipal electricity and natural gas consumption by 13%. And uh, yeah, two digits, we were like, wow, ourselves. And I didn't really realize until I've been like emailing Rob for four years or something that um, the average uh, statewide energy efficiency programs are like at 1.2%. Michigan's are at 1.2, but the averages are like between 1% and 3%, I think. so. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, this competition was this like great little test bed for a whole bunch of approaches that failed and a few that um, succeeded. And uh, so ba -da -ba -da -ba -da, this is what we did. We had 209 home energy audits. Our Houghton County has 35,000 people or, you know, nice tight little area. And then 55 winterizations and the refrigerator replacements and the heat pump water heaters and the LEDs, those three things were really the things that um, saved the most electricity. Now, um, the new refrigerators pay for themselves in three years. If you have an old one over 10 years old or older, you can like get a new one and you're gonna start saving money on your bill. The heat pump water heaters, how many of you heat, with or heat your water with electricity in this area? Just like just a, just a handful, same well, same thing with us. And um, but the electric water heaters are use um, so much more electricity than these new heat hybrid heat pump water heaters. So they bring the water up to room temperature and then top it off with electricity. And they're hybrids so that in the winter time, I mean, typically I'm going to shotgun here a little bit. Typically, people keep their water heaters in the basement. So in the winter time, when it gets really cold in your basement. Um, then it switches over to the hybrid part and heats it with electricity. Now uh, these and the LEDs um, were really significant as you can imagine, you've all heard that. But these three, um, this couldn't happen without Efficiency United, who is, um, I haven't named yet, but our Michigan Public Service Commission works with Efficiency United, gave them the contract. Efficiency United is multi-state energy uh, efficiency corporation and so Wisconsin you guys have access to that too. And we couldn't, we would not have had nearly the impact we had without Efficiency United. So it's kind of this built in, uh, built into the system way of, because we're, get, we're getting nicked on every gas and electric bill for $3 anyway. And I assume you guys are too, that goes into this fund that the PSC then contracts to Efficiency United who brings that back to um, income qualified people in the form of equipment that saves electricity and natural gas. So um, you know, if you're interested in that, you might find out what kind of programs Wisconsin has and what's available to you. But on top of that, um, the winterizations, that's been like this great big moral, you know, uh, not demoralizing, the opposite of moralizing, um, like super way to keep it on everybody's page. And um, we winterized, we did 55 winterizations during that time period, but now I backed it off to two a month. But what we do is we go to somebody's house and we tighten it up and it's really a blast. I mean, 
I can't overstate how rewarding it is to like spend that three hours and like while you're there the house is getting warmer and you know that that mom with her single mom with her baby is all going to be a little bit easier for us. Super rewarding. So this, we can just blast through that. You guys don't know any of them. <laughs> These are all... Yeah, we got the, oh yeah, of the service organizations. We usually, every winterization we do, we have a core built around, built around one service organization. And then we have this big newsletter now that goes out to 100 people, big for our area. And then people just randomly show up. I used to try to overschedule it and hyper schedule it, but I just tell them where we're going to be. And I can't wait for the day when somebody brings cookies, you know. <laughs> okay, so this is a list of the the sort of the measures that we decided to do for this that we kind of came up with as being the best ones to do. And I, I have this list over here. I have lots of copies of this if you're interested. I'm not going to talk too much about either of these, but um, because this is something a volunteer came up with that would take too much time. But I am going to go into depth a little bit on that. So rim joist seal, caulking, water heater insulation, water pipes, door sweeps. Gaskets, gasketing your outer walls and outlets. Um, same thing, more foaming around any leaks you see. So here we go. Okay, this is supposed to be a fun slide. Okay, it always starts like this. <laughs> it was a cold day, right? <laughs> oh, I like that. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna talk about. I'm I'm hoping I'm, I'm like starting to like because of my time, right? Okay, so rim joist seal. Okay. This is, oh, I brought my foam gun and everything. I meant to like have a prop right now. Foam guns, um, if you go to Walmart and you buy a little can of spray foam because you have holes in your basement that you want to deal with, it's like super frustrating and it just makes you want to like have a tantrum. I mean, it might help, but they're just super unwieldy. So we have these foam guns. A regular one is about $45, and we have like $120 one and $160 one. And I have an arsenal of them. I have like about 20. And a can of foam, if you go to your, um, your hardware store or your building lumber supply, is $15. And if you, so we, we use these tools to go uh, I'll show you what a rim joist is in a minute, I think. Oops, no, it was the one above it. I'm sorry. If you go into your basement and you look up, your rim joist is behind where he's foamed these, and these are your floor joists. So what we do, okay, then come back. We cut pieces of blue board, and then we stick them up in the cavities, and then we spray foam them behind them, and then we stick it in, and then we spray foam in front of them. So what we're doing takes about $120 worth of materials, but the labor, since we have these 11 people on, three times, is like if a contractor is going to do it, it's going to cost you $1,500. But you can tackle your own basement, like a little bit at a time, take it as, you know, as you can handle it. And then what we do is we lend out, we, we lend people our guns, if they're like regular income people. So then basically you cut the blue board using a T-square, that's the tool we use there. And it's, and then as you go, it just like tightens up your basement. It's the third leakiest place in your house. So, and this is a bunch of um, QAnon Community Foundation youth advisory students. And this is the house we were at. I'm going to show you a thermal image in a minute. We use clear caulk, and then here's the thermal images. So the lady has a hole in her floor. Fortunately, she doesn't have this uh, shoe, base shoe up. Is that what that's called? But as you can see, it was like 18 degrees out. It's 26 degrees right there blowing in. Dun, da, 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 da. <laughs> right? Just in that spot. So keeping your floor trim cocked, and this is, goes on white, but in about three hours, it'll look just like that again. Then uh, the next thing we do is, um, it's not actually, we're going to take this off our list, the, um, putting the um, insulation on the blankets on the water heaters, because if you have a newer one, they're usually so well insulated that they tell you not to. But if you have an older one, and then you, you sort of look at the model and you check online, if it's older, this blanket will pay for itself in about two months because it's, you're keeping that water warm inside there. And then um, also you go through and do your water lines, your hot water lines. Same thing. This stuff it runs six, six feet of it's $1.89. Tape it up on your hot water lines. And how many of you haven't done that yet? A couple. See, it looks like plenty of people have. Okay, that's great. 
let's keep, let's uh, show you, oh, here's another example of your water lines. And then I have a couple of thermal shots too. Also, if you heat with radiator heat, this is an example where the woman had uh, baseboard floor heating, water, hot water, and in her basement, it was 90 degrees. Now we're going the opposite direction. We put the koozies on, right? And then it brought it down to 80. So you're saving that 10 degrees, um, and that's saving you money. Like not squandering your resources. Uh, installing door sweeps is a really um, can be teasy, tedious thing to do, but if you have, if you can see air underneath your door, <laughs> do it. Uh, but you just these cost about like eight bucks. Pilot hole in your door, and it's a little bit um, infuriating. But open and shut your door a few times, and then you know screw it on, and then open and shut your door, and then usually it takes a number of times to do that. But sometimes it's nice and straightforward. This is really silly. You can just like stick them on. I can't imagine how long they're going to last. I kind of put that on for humor. <laughs> um, outlet and gasket covers. Oh, by the way, we're getting close to the end now, so <laughs> far warning. These things are little pieces of silica, uh, sort of plasticky foam stuff that, um, I want to say silicone, but I'd be wrong. And what you do is you just take off any outlets and light switches on your outer wall covers, on your outer walls, take them out, put some of these in, and um, uh, it, on each one it will, I'll show you the thermal image here in a minute, but also you take child protective caps and put them in the holes because that becomes a cold superhighway once you have this part sealed. And with our handy thermal camera, here's an open one. We just did this about a month ago. This woman had three of these in her kitchen without even a switch plate cover on it, and it was 14 degrees. And then we put this on, it was 43 degrees. And now that it was something underneath just the leaky old house. I'm not sure, like, I'd like a better picture that doesn't have that blue spot there, but I, that is, that's it. That's a really good way to stay, stay a little warmer, so. That is, that's just a little bit of a story about the work we did up north and things you might want to think about doing for yourselves. And, you know, that's that energy efficiency solution. Oh, yeah, we'll do them later.